main event of the evening and the fight you've all been waiting for. The first ever Brave title fight in the featherweight division. We will have five five minute rounds and I have one question for you and one question only. Hal Antem Jahizun. Let's introduce our first fighter, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins and six losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 65.4 kilograms. Representing Alliance MMA and fighting out of Guadalajara, Mexico. Give it up for Masio Fulen. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 13 wins and four losses, with 11 of those victories by way of submission. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 65.4 kilograms, representing La Bon Ecole Gym and fighting out of Montpellier, France, by way of Algeria, give it up for Elias Smile Bootgangstam! With referee instructions, Mark Goddard. Hey, gentlemen, you understand the rules you're fighting under and listening at all times, keep yourself protected. If I say stop, you stop. Touch gloves, let's do this. It's game time, Soto. Time this to knuckle it. up and throw down five rounds for the featherweight championship. History in the making right here. Yes, indeed. And expect in the, this to be fireworks right off the bat. In the black and the white, Masio Fallen, in the white and the green, it is Elias Bugdig's dam. Great movement here. Now, Masio wants to definitely avoid those kind of clinches. Elias is a very strong opponent. Has great judo throws. Great oh, and a big knockdown. right hand. Oh, watch out. a huge out. knockdown. Macho's getting up. The Budding's Dam is quickly going to try to take his back. His submission game is elite. Wow, look how strong Elias is. Macho's still in. Oh, and he's out. Oh, no, he's no, out. he's still in. He's out. He's out. You're he's absolutely out. right. No, he's, he's still in. Oh, my goodness. Mark wow. Goddard is a veteran, and he knew that he was still alive. Oh, my that gosh. That is incredible heart from Elias Budikstam. Oh How did he survive that? Wow. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Dude, the last three fights <laughs> have taken it out of me. Now, this is the perfect example of an excellent matchup from Manolo from the, from the United States and uh, Yusuf Nasser from the Middle East. I mean, two amazing fighters. Now, Budik's Dam is going to try to pull guard here, but how much does he have left? He took some serious punishment there. Wow. As you saw, the, the heavy hands, the power, that boxing background of Masio Fullen. Watch out, though. Elias's ground game is no joke. Yeah, Masio Huge doesn't Huge elbow play. there from Masio. Lands clean. Didn't quite open him up, though, surprisingly. That was a nasty elbow. Yeah, yeah, that was solid. But look at those hips on Elias. No, he is really so pushing. active. He's trying to go for that. He's trying to go for that sweep. He is so active. Look at those hips. Masio can't. He needs to square up with those hips. Oh, look at that, man. He recognizes. Masio recognizes. He knows what's Great happening. veteran move. You're absolutely right. Great veteran move there by Masio Fullen, not getting baited. To, he, needs to lay, he needs to lay off this, this ground game, bring him back up where he's successful, where he almost finished this fight. But here's the experience, and Masio's been working on his ground game. Now he's oh, stuck but in a that's triangle. a triangle. And he's, and gonna he's got a perfect angle on that triangle. Oh, that's a big thumbs up. He feels like it's over, but he, he doesn't know over. who he's dealing with. Masio, Masio needs to step over. If he doesn't step wow. over, this could be it. Tight in there for the win. It. Smile is your new champion, ladies wow. and gentlemen. The new champ. Budix Dam taps him out. Wow. Oh he my goodness. He is the hero here tonight. Congratulations to Elias. Wow. Folks, we will be back with the official decision from Abu Dhabi. Incredible performance. And welcome back to Brave Combat Federation. Up right, to ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen. What a battle there was, and we have our winner at 2 minutes and 24 seconds of the very first round.
by Triangle and your Brave Combat Federation first featherweight title belt winner, Elias Smile Boudinxton! All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in the Bantamweight division. Introducing your first warrior, Fighting! Now in the blue corner, this man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and one loss. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61.65 kilograms. Representing Bulgarian top team and fighting out of Lyon, France, please welcome Yanis, the Desert Warrior, Gamoy! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins, four losses, and one no contest. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61.4 kilograms. Representing Phoenix team and Great Dan Jim and fighting out of Minsk, Belarus. Please welcome Vladislav. Yellow Novitsky! Your referee is Ali. This is on Belarusian cried gear. Ready? Phil, Ready? this is not a hometown hero. This is a hometown superhero we're watching. Kirik does that put additional pressure, being in your hometown, fighting on a huge stage, or is he the type of fighter that's going to thrive in this kind of situation? By the looks of it, 100%. I'm looking at a calm fighter. He's smooth, he's focused, not feeling that pressure at all, just feeling uplifted by it. I fully expect to see Yanis Gamori invest in the leg kicks early. Incredible low-kicking game from the young man. Has immobilized a number of opponents in such a fashion. Vladislav moving very cleverly, circling left, circling right. When he stops, he's fainting. Opponent doesn't quite know matter what to make of it yet. He's coming in with shots, but they're relatively light. He's not committing to anything. This is really high-level fighting. This is what you do in order to learn what your opponent is like. Don't commit to something because you could get knocked out. Perfect example right there. Quick little jab, pop back, saw his opponent throw a hook. Now he's got a sense of what his opponent's reaction time is like, and it did it. he did it completely safely. Giannis Gamori, a very elusive fighter, gets a distance and range often very quickly in his fights, and he's happy. No clash of shins there. As I say, Gamori is happy to let his opponent walk on to shots, but that's a huge leg kick from Davidski. Yellow lands a big one. Desert Warrior tries to answer in kind, still a little bit tight, slips. Never mind yellow, the leg of Gamori is gonna be black and blue if he takes any more of those leg kicks. Very impressed by Vladislav so far. This is exactly how you should open a fight. Download a lot of information without putting yourself in any danger and look okay doing it. Nice front kick, push kick there from Gomori to the knee, hyper extending a la John Jones. Incredibly nasty technique. Always makes me cringe a little bit when I see that push kick to the knee. Interesting though, it's Nowitzki who has found uh, the range and timing a little bit quicker. I think, Phil, he was more consciously doing it. He, he moved in a circle, he fainted in and out, trying to draw his opponent in. Long before that shot had, would come in, he had popped out of the way, downloaded all that information. Now he's getting pretty close to the point where he has what he needs to know, and he's gonna start opening up a little bit. Nowitzki looking very loose in there. Gamori has switched his stance a number of times. Now getting a little bit of leg kicking offense off. You can tell both these guys very technical when it comes to their striking. Happy to play it out on the feet. Both men confident in the striking. Nice, stiff jab from Vladislav. Nice sidekick, you don't see that too often in mixed martial arts. 
And it follows it up with a whipping leg kick. I'd like to see a little bit more of that from Gomori. Desert Warrior has big respect for his opponent's striking ability. That's why he's not fully committing to those leg kicks. He's putting them out there like that, like that, not fully rolling the hips over. Really, really technical display of striking here from both men. Both men throwing their strikes really clean. I'm enjoying the little leg kicking battle they have going on. Novitsky using that pendulum kick very successfully to destabilize opponent. He did it twice successfully. The third time, he's going to take advantage of it. Nice attempt at the question mark kick. He landed a number of low kicks and then went high. Some wonderful hips, Dick Dexterity to get that off, but huge kicks again by Novitsky. This is a great fight, Kirk. This is absolutely technical mastery. Oh, again. Okay. Fain to go low with the kick, came up top and just skimmed the head of Nowitzki. Nice counter hook there. Nowitzki been employing very successfully, has been employing in and out footwork the whole time, was able to sail away from that head kick, escaped it by just an inch or less. Again, leg kick for leg kick, nice stiff inside leg kick. And then a crushing job to follow up. I'd like to see Gamoy put the hands together and finish with the leg kicks, really chain those attacks together rather than single shots. That's exactly why he's not, Phil. The counters we're seeing here from Yellow are very, very nasty. Putting together more than a single shot in a row could be a fight ender for you. Really strategic battle there. As I said, the leg kicking back and forth between the two. And very hard to separate both fighters after one round, Kirik. Absolutely excellent round. My money is on Yellow Nowitzki for winning that one 10-9, but I am not a judge. I loved what Nowitzki was doing with his taking the, the leg kicking game to the renowned leg kicker, fighting him at his own game, showing him that he has the credentials, has the ability to hang in there with him. Exactly, Phil. Not only was that very successful for him from a technical perspective, but when you can do what your opponent is best known for to him, you get a big psychological boost from that as well. Fighters is getting final instructions from their cornered referee clearing the cage and we are all set for round two. Big shout out to the Belarusian officials. They are all top notch. Nowitzki constantly switching stances, giving his opponent different looks, different entries into the kicking game. Still very light on the feet is Nowitzki. Ah, kick for kick, I'm loving that. It's almost that, that Muay Thai mentality, you land, then I land, then you land. Crowd loved that, they were going back and forth a little bit, looked like Gamori might have been pulling ahead. Now Nowitzki may have pulled it out just by a little bit on the judges' scorecards thus far in the fight, only 45 seconds in. I'm really enjoying the movement of Nowitzki. He's not being a static target for his opponent, constantly moving, constantly forcing his opponent to readjust, careering forward with big shots. Nowitzki starting to string his attacks together, unlike his opponent. He's starting to have the confidence. He's starting to have the understanding of his opponent's technique and reflexes, so he feels like he can throw multiple shots without getting knocked out. Starting to finish nicely with those leg kicks, landing the hands and finishing, just cutting the shin into the meat of the leg of Gomori. You can see the inside starting to redden up a little bit. A little bit too far away just for the head kick there. Brave, no Brave Nation, the, the point on the leg that those kicks are aimed at is of critical importance. If you kick mid-thigh, the opponent can grab, like you saw right there. That was a huge kick buckling the leg of Nowitzki. Nowitzki is aiming those shots just above the knee, 
where they're nearly impossible to catch without at least a level change or otherwise doing something. And again, a push kick to the knee, hyper extending the knee joint. Some people call that push kick to the knee a dirty move. That's silly. It's no more dangerous than anything else. Punching somebody in the head or kicking somebody in the head's dangerous too. Yeah, at the end of the day, Kerry, it's a fight in a cage. It's a fight in a cage <laughs> held under rules. Those kicks are absolutely legal. 100%. Invesky needs to be careful of not hunting down the elusive counter striker. If you do that, that could be exactly what Yanis Gamori wants him to do. You've got to wonder after a multitude of push kicks and a really jarring kick to the knee. How compromised Nowitzki could nope. potentially be. Oh, he walked him a little bit. He had him with wobbly legs. And a flying knee parlayed into a takedown from Gamori. Potential triangle coming. Potential Omoplata coming. Potential Gogo Plata coming. Oh, yep, there it is. Trying to work for a Gogo Plata. How cool would that have been? And back up to standing. Nowitzki does a great job of getting back to his feet. Fantastic job from Gamori. Could be trying to hit the triangle from here. Thundering elbows to the body. Belarusian crowd going wild here. Don't think he quite has the arm in that triangle. As you said, more of a head scissor. Could be trying to... Potential here for a Von Flu choke if Gamori's wise to it. Levitsky needs to let go of that neck. Gamori not really trying to work for the Von Flu choke. Von Flu choke, of course, he would be jamming his shoulder into the carotid artery of his opponent. Gamori didn't feel out. threatened by that, that headlock, by that guillotine attempt. He was just riding it out. It's absolutely a legitimate approach to it. And I think Gamori just taking a little bit of time to reset, to recalibrate. He was on wobbly legs at a stage there. Nowitzki showing great flexibility, trying to get back to his feet, denied by Gamori. Nowitzki looking for that high guard, maybe trying for a rubber guard again. Potential for an arm bar. Coming. Oh, beautiful elbow then from Gamori right down the middle. Very, very good fight. Brave Nation, absolutely beautiful example of risk and reward. When you open up those feet in order to go for something, it does, you can no longer control your opponent's head. He's free to throw an elbow to your face and he probably will. Final seconds of the second round here. And again, a very interesting and difficult fight to score. You had the shot come in from Nowitzki that wobbled his opponent, but Gamori parlayed that into a takedown and finished the round in top position. Very difficult, Kirik. I'm calling this one two rounds for Nowitzki, but I could absolutely be argue. I could absolutely would listen to an argument that it's two rounds the other way as well. As you said, Phil, very close fight thus far. I do think this third and final round could be telling. That was a huge leg kick from Nowitzki there. I wonder if we'll see that leg kick from Gamori. That, oh, it was a lead hook that wobbled him a little bit. Landed clean, just shy with the flying knee. Fantastic job by Gamori. I thought that that takedown was completely stuffed. He turned the corner, put his opponent on his back, took a little breather, and then started to open up again. Fantastic. Ending to the round for Giannis, the desert warrior, Gamori. A lot of respect in the Brave Combat Federation cage. Phil, the shots are getting harder and heavier. These two have taken the full measure of each other. They've learned as much about their opponent's speed, timing, technique, reflexes as they are going to, and they're starting to turn it on. Another nice sidekick from Gamori. And with the fight being so close, Carrick, both these fighters can't really afford to go to the judges. 
They have each been told by their corners, start to turn it up, son, and they are. Big takedown from Gomori, the, the former K1 national French champion with the takedown. Now, if anything, that tells you just how dangerous he thinks the striking of Nowitzki is. It also illustrates the, the, the brilliance of mixed martial arts. You can, even if your jiu-jitsu is not phenomenal, if you land some clean shots first, all of a sudden your black belt opponent is a brown belt. If you get hit twice, a purple belt. And the same thing with wrestling. You may not be the greatest wrestler in the world, but if you can get your opponent to stand up and start to trade with you, boom, you can put him on his back. Gamori again just taking the opportunity to, to recalibrate, to reset. Novitski does have a foot on the cage, may use that to try and wall walk. This is a wise strategy that we're seeing on top from Giannis Gamori. He knows when you're on top, as long as you stay busy, the judges see you as being ahead. If he does something crazy, postures way back, tries to land a knockout elbow, his opponent might well escape. He's riding his opponent, throwing shots as necessary to stay there. Hoping his opponent makes a mistake, he can quickly take advantage of and end the fight. Gamori, of course, a fantastic striker, but statistically has finished most of his fights by submission. Does have an arm bar, an arm triangle, a guillotine, and a triangle in his locker. So does have that diversity of submissions. This is a little bit of a, these are two wild fighters. You've got a, a K1 fighter that loves to choke people, and you've got a, a submission master who loves to knock people out. As we said, Nowitzki, a, a Belarusian national champion in no-gi grappling and combat sambo, but that has seven wins by way of KO or TKO. Referee may be looking at a stand-up fairly soon. Gamori lands a strike and dives right back into the guard. Transitioning to the half guard, may try and sneak that knee through for side control. Nowitzki has that overhook, just trying to immobilize that arm of Gamori so he can't be hit with it. Closed guard is purely a defensive posture. Starting to flat back a little bit is Nowitzki. Oh, big elbow followed by hellacious ground and pound, but needs to be wary of the triangle and the submission threat. Nowitzki needs to open those feet, start to try and make something happen. Closed guard is a purely defensive posture. This is not a sport that rewards that. Just under 90 seconds left in the third and final round. And right now, dominance from Gamori in the top position. The Belarusian crowd getting behind the man. He's trying to get that elevator sweep. Trying to use a butterfly hook to switch and turn. to be frustrating if you're Nowitzki right now. You're thinking to yourself, what do I need to do to get this man off me? Whereas Gomori is doing just enough to keep himself honest. First thing he's got to do, Phil, open those feet, maybe try a hip bump, use that sweep to try and affect a stand-up. Big elbows again from Gomori. It's always going to be difficult to mount any kind of striking offense off your back if you're Nowitzki. It is used to significant extent sometimes, but gravity is the thing. Things dropping down harder you than things that fly up from bottom. Nice work from Gamori to seamlessly transition into the side control. Novinsky, to his credit, keeps working. Short time now, Brave Nation, 10 seconds. And he needs to be wary, another reverse triangle. Is the crowd it is going bit? crazy in. Oh, and it's just time. A little, just a little bit too late there from Davidsky, but it's the second reverse triangle we saw tonight.
Brave Nation, let's give a big round of applause for both warriors bringing it in the Brave CF51 cage. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 29-28, red corner. Your second judge scores about 29-28, blue corner. And your third judge scores about 29-28 for a split decision victory. Out of the blue corner, Yanis, the Desert Warrior, get ready. for this bout are Stefano Valente, Tazio Basilio, and Stefano Gigoni. Your referee in charge of the action is the bandit, Decky Larkin. Two men enter, only one man leaves with his arm raised in victory. Who comes out on top of the world in this amazing main event? It's time to find out. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, before we begin, I have one question for you, and one question only. For all those watching in the beautiful country of Italy, and the millions watching around the world, Brave Nation, are you ready for war? All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is five. Five minute rounds with the vacant light heavyweight world title on the line. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins and three losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 91.6 kilograms. Representing. Strike Academy Switzerland and fighting out of Algeria. Please welcome the first challenger, Mohammed Lambians Saeed Malam. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins, four losses, and one no contest. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs a rating 92.3 kilograms. Representing Team Lebanon and fighting out of Lebanon, please welcome the reigning Brave Combat Federation middleweight world champion and the light heavyweight world title challenger, Mohammed, the latest, Fabraki! For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Decky Larkin. The hairs on the back of my neck are standing up right now, Kirk. This fight, the magnitude of this, the build up to this, it all comes down to this one moment inside the cage. Mofakro is fainting. He's fainting. Strikes coming from the right side. He's trying to get reads on what Lambiance is going to do. Those little micro gestures, like you saw right there with the right hand. He's looking to see how his opponent reacts. Once he gets a sense of what his opponent's going to do consistently, he's going to follow up. I'm inside my lamb landing two very, very heavy leg kicks to start off proceedings. Mohamed Fakhruddin had to shake that out a little bit. Very smart beginning for Mo Fakhruddin. He's not just standing and banging. Mohamed Saeed Malem in on a single. Fakhruddin trying to get in on a guillotine here. Take down. Still on it. He's still on it. Elbow's not quite positioned. Hands are now apart. Mo Fakhruddin is going to look to get back on his feet. Fakhruddin keeping a hold of that neck. 
Mohamed Saeed Malam grabbing the ankle, trying to shelf it. Both these men in on guillotine positions. Baku disengages, landing strikes. Uh, may have been a low blow there. Becky Larkin may not have been positioned to see it. I'm not quite sure if it was from this position. There is no tougher fighter in this sport than Mohamed Fakhreddin. He's going to be able to power through that low shot if indeed that's what we saw. Double underhook position, transitions position. Now back into the 50 50 under over position. And I'm not, oh, that's a big shot. That was a big shot right where you don't want to receive a shot. This is the sort of thing that happens, Phil, when there's just a little bit too much trash talk. People get a little bit too wild in there. I think we're going to see the inevitable replay of that groin shot. Groin shots in MMA are like car crashes. You don't want to look at them, but you cannot turn your head away. Camera angle unfortunately missed what happened there. We can't see it clearly. Mofakhardine now has up to five minutes to decide whether he wants to continue or not. There is no question or not that he's going to want to continue. And he didn't bother taking that five minutes. He's going to be ready to go very shortly. Nicky Larkin had a word with L'Ambiance. Nate, hey, don't do that again. Absolutely guaranteed if there's another low one, Decky's going to take a point away. Little hand touch. Now, Phil, that fighting up against the cage was interesting. It's, it's, it's the most pure test in the sport of who's stronger. And there, there seemed to be some back and forth there. There's those crushing, thunderous leg kicks from Mohamed Fakhreddin. Great Mason, those kicks from Mo Fakhreddin have actually broken a leg before. That's how powerful they are. It's like being hit with a cricket bat. Fakhreddin trying to land punches and bunches. Sometimes the worst thing you can do is land a clean shot on Mohamed Fakhreddin because you're going to get three of them right back at you. These men haven't quite landed definitive shots with the hands, but both have landed heavy, stinging leg kicks. Bill Saeed Malo appears to be slowing down just a little bit, and I can't explain quite why. Oh, another huge leg kick. You saw the slight two-step that Mohamed Saeed Malo had to do here. Surely we would be looking at another TKO due to leg kicks here. Three heavy, heavy leg kicks landed by Mohamed Fakhreddin. There's already a serious welt on that leg, and the leg just gave out. As I discussed earlier, if enough shots land cleanly there, the ankle can no longer do its job, and the foot drops, making it extremely difficult to fight. Yeah, if you're Mohamed Fakhreddin, do you zero in on that and try and try and really chew up that lead leg? You go upstairs for a little bit, Phil. You go upstairs with the shots for a little bit until your opponent no longer thinks about that calf, and yeah, then you kick it again. Big knee by Fakhreddin and Mohamed Saeed Malam doing the intelligent thing by shooting in on the takedown. Extremely smart move from L'Ambiance. He did not want to be involved in that striking exchange any longer. Mohamed Saeed Malam in top position right now. Stepping over, trying to shove the legs of Mohamed Fakhreddin. Fakhreddin again trying to get in on that neck. Can he get back to his feet? He has his back against the cage. Does he abandon the grip and try and get the point of the elbow down and then extend up? Certainly abandons the guillotine attempt, the submission attempt. What you can do with that grip is use it to get yourself back up to standing with a little chin grab. That's what you saw right there, beautiful technique. And he's, oh, big shot. Mohamed Saeed Malam dropped him. That is the power that we've been talking about. Oh, that was to the back of the head, was it? May have been a little bit of an illegal shot. Big shots being landed by Mohamed Saeed it's Malam. Like and it's over. Mohamed Saeed Malam is the new Brave Combat Federation, light heavyweight champion of the world.
it off. Mohamed Saeed Malam stands victorious on top of the cage. He just got off his stage. All right, Brave Nation, an incredible main event. This war ends at four minutes and 20 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes and new Brave Combat Federation light heavyweight champion of the world, Mohamed Lambians Saeed Next bout is three five minute rounds in Brave Combat Federation's biggest rivalry in the welterweight division. Introducing first, your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 13 wins and six losses and two no contests. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 77.5 kilograms, representing Obi fight in Paris, France, by way of Algeria. Please welcome Tahar Fasthead Hatby. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and one loss and one no contest. He stands. 179 centimeters tall and weighs already 77.5 kilograms. Representing Man in Factory Gym, Tiger Muay Thai in Phuket, Thailand, and fighting out of Lebanon. Give it up for Mohammed, the latest Bakrati. Your referee is Paulo D. Oliveira. It's going to be an incredible clash of striking styles. Hadby is a classically trained striker in the mold of Anderson Silva. Fakhreddin has uh, been God gifted with the heaviest hands I've seen in this division. I'd liken him to anybody, it would be Dan Henderson. I do not know whose striking is going to reign supreme tonight. Well, that's why we do it. That's why we put him inside this cage to figure that out in the gray. That is Tahar Hadby in the black. Mohamed Fakhreddin. Round number one is underway. This fight is brought to you by Landmark Hotel, the hospitality partner and official hotel of Brave Combat Federation and the Jordan Tourism Board, the transportation partner of Brave Combat Federation number 10. Seeing who's going to strike first is both men circling. You got that right. I mean, likening him to, to Anderson Silva, just quick striking, very, very precise, accurate striking. Not a ton of power behind the shots, but over a period of time, accumulating, he could take out anybody. This We literally could see a situation where there's a I'd be out lands eight to one, but there's that one that Fakhreddin can throw that ends everything for the night. And of course, keep an eye on those low blows. That's what ended the last fight and turned it into a no contest. A lot of people don't know that Fakhreddin actually spent a lot of time in the U.S. growing up. I believe he started off in Lebanon, went to the U.S. for a number of years, then went back to Lebanon. Hadby's the first fighter to find his range cleanly. He's able to land high and low now. Beautiful left hand by Tahar Hadby, but here comes Fakhreddin charging forward as he does. He 
throw some serious bombs there, Kerry. To get a clear sense of how hard Fakhruddin can hit, just imagine that he's holding two hammers in his hand right now. That's the potential effect of his shots. Ramon Jordan, Brave Combat Federation number 10. Follow us along on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hashtag Brave Combat Federation 10. It's going to be interesting to see if this fight finds its way to the ground at all. Fogarty does have some pretty strong wrestling and nice ground and pound. Right now, they just want to settle it hand to hand, foot to foot. But that could make the difference in the fight, Kerry. Hudby landed a clean liver kick. I think you're going to see him try and set that up a second time. Outside leg kick by Fogarty. Hudby's incredibly hard to hit, but he has to be to stay in this fight. Slip that jab, slip that jab. Beautiful left hand, left Woo! uppercut. He stuck that one. A quarter inch closer, that could have been a decapitation. That'd be unfortunate. <laughs> Great combination work by both guys. Both men have landed some great significant shots, but I think Parker needs doing a little bit more damage. Hard to believe that we still have three fights to go. This fight would be the main event all day long on any fight. He's getting to his feet. Fakhardin's got an iron chin, Are too. Are you kidding me? Oh my God, he's made it to standing. Wow. Oh, my God. All right, they just took the lead in the fight of the night department just on that recovery. That was incredible. Tahar Hobby looked like he had the fight won, and somehow, some way, it's the heart of Muhammad Fakhardin that has carried him through. Face is bloodied, but he is not down and out. From the replay, the Hadvi was pouring it on and somehow couldn't get that stoppage. There may be some concern on Hadvi's part that he punched himself out. It's happened before. Absolutely. Hadvi does have great conditioning, but you, you hit that right on the head. Oh, and a big front kick that just missed the chin of Tahar Hadvi. Hadvi and Fakhardin, number two. Hadvi wants that left hook, but he's not going to throw it immediately because he knows it won't work. He's going to try something sneaky, probably something low, and then he'll look for that left hook again. I mean, when these two just start throwing, and they start throwing wild like that. It could go either way. Fakhardin could get a knockout. Hadvi could put him on his back. That's what makes this fight so intriguing. This is absolutely an any given night fight. Nobody can tell me that these aren't two great fighters testing each other. No holding back from either competitor. And we're just one minute in to round number two. Right down the middle, Fakhardin. Look for one of those big rushing combinations. It's kind of his trademark. He does it so well. Hadby's doing a beautiful job still of not getting overexcited. He's playing his game, he's managing distance, moving his head properly. Hadby with oh precise shots. It's, it's happening again. Fakhardin with a puncher's chance. 
referee's gonna stop it soon. We're going to take one more look at what's got to be the fight of the night. This is the ending of the most heated rivalry in Mideast history. This is the beginning of the end. They land again and again. The referee is giving them every opportunity, but the, the strikes are relentless. They're getting harder and faster, and the referee ends it. Fakhreddin, the warrior, wants to keep going. With the interest of fighter safety and properly, the referee has declared that this fight cannot go on anymore. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that bout comes to a close at 1 minute and 54 seconds of the very first second round. Your, excuse me, your referee, Paulo de Oliveira, stops about your winner, TKO, due to strikes. To her, fast hands, hot face. All right. Wow. It's time for the main event of the evening and the war we've all been waiting for. Coming from the historic Arad Fort in Combat Kingdom in the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Two warriors are ready to collide inside the Brave CF Arena. Brave Nation, don't blink for this one. This will be absolute fire. We are set for this main event, Ilyas Jerun. In the blue, in the red corner, taking on Abdul Rahman Mahajiev in the blue. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Phil Campbell and Kirik Jenes, calling the action here at Brave 48. And there is a palpable tension right now to see how this fight unfolds. Really, will be telling to see the game plan of Giroud. Will he, as you alluded to, Phil, look to take this past that first round? Because we know what the inevitable game plan of Makajiev is, is to try and get the fight done in the first round. If he can't do that, what adaptations can he make to his game? Absolutely, we're gonna have to see him dig deep. But what he uses, because he's not scared of the ground, he will throw kicks, he will throw big winging shots. And as he proved in his outing at Brave 32, even if you put him on his back, he can submit you from that position as well. Interestingly though, wearing a knee brace on his Right knee, I believe it is. Left knee. Left knee. Can't tell my left from my right. 32 <laughs> years old. We'll have you using a knife and fork properly by the end of this as well. <laughs> That's big talk. <laughs> oh, 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 huge shot to the body from Makajiev. Big stuff. And what are you seeing early, Kirik? This is very tentative, respectful opening from both these fighters. I'm seeing intelligent fighting. Stepping straight in there and starting to exchange is not intelligent fighting. You don't know what your opponent's like no matter how much, even if you trained with them, no matter how much tape you watch. You need to find out for yourself what your opponent's reaction time is, what his reach is, what his strength feels like, and you have to do that as safely as possible. That's what we're watching right here. It's not just a tit for tat. We're watching information being downloaded on both sides. Sometime in the next minute or so, they're going to have the information they need and they're going to turn the wick up. Nice body kick once again. And we're looking at Southpaw versus Orthodox. Those rear kicks to the body for both sides really open in these positions, Phil. Oh, that was a nice shot landed by Jerun just as Makajiev was coming in. But yes, as you say, it opens up a new myriad of strikes, a new myriad of possibilities for the fighters with an Orthodox going against the Southpaw. I would like to see Jerun try and open up with the body kick a little bit more. Try and really dig that into the liver. But in saying that, then you're vulnerable to the takedown. Certainly. Oh, and if you look at the underneath of the left elbow there of Jeroen, he is wearing oh, yes, that uh, up. marks from the, the body shots from Makhajiev. Very tense. This is the, the calmest start I've seen from Abdul Rahman. Oh, oh God! God! Knockout! Jeroen looking to finish the fight. Rahman trying to survive. I'll be honest, I thought that was a head kick knockout. Gentlemen, just by the way, Makhajiev hit the grind. Well, we are going to see he's calling him in, but no. We're oh, going to see if it... He got up very tentatively Makazi there. Makaziev letting his head clear. 
Oh, ducking down, looking for the finish here, oh. looking for the guillotine. This would be the seventh, or sorry, the eighth guillotine of the man's career if he were to get it. Marcus Diev has a foot, he's oh, going to try and clear that. the knee. That. Oh. that is great technique. Got to stop the leg entanglement, pass to the far side, now he's in top side control. That might have been the biggest mistake that Jurund has made. Oh, look at the angle on the net, there's just the technique for escaping. And you think about that still dusting those cobwebs off from getting dropped by that head kick, Phil. That was an absolute huge head kick and you have to give credit to the recuperative powers of Makhachev because I thought he was gone. I yeah. genuinely thought he was out. The way he fell and credit to Deki Larkin as well, understanding the fight was still in it. Phil, he may well have been out and then came to as he hit the ground. It happens rarely, but this has been a night of firsts for me. I've seen some incredible actions, some of which I've never seen before. I do believe the fighter was out, hit the ground, woke up, and now appears to be in control. Oh, in like top, in it, this is his bread and butter, Phil, sorry. No, not, not at all. I was just saying I'd like to see Jarun try and work his way back to the feet as that's where he had the most success. And this is exactly where Mukherjee wants to be. And he has one minute, two seconds to work his ground game. Good guard work as well, though, from Jarun. He might drop for this. He doesn't yet. Yeah. Turning around. Oh, look at this, looking to try and get this. This would be unreal if we see a toehold finish here from uh, Makhachev. Brave Nation, Makhachev needs to secure that grip on his left wrist with his right one. He's pinning the limb and he has lost it for now. He's transitioning, to the almost there. This is the get, wow, can he get this? Trying to triangle the Might feet go. to keep himself safe. Might switch. Could switch to a straight knee yeah. bar, decides not to. And now Jerome oh. ends up on top. Oh, if you are a jiu-jitsu purist, that was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and now on top, Jeroen, as we come to the end of the first round. Now the questions begin, Phil. Now, Kirik, we ask, can Makajiev take his first victory outside the first round? This for Jeroen will be a little landmark for him going back to his corner. I was at the weigh-ins. He did have a very, very hard weigh-in. Some fighters can bounce back from that quicker than others. We're gonna find out in the next five minutes whether that's the case here. And we see the body kick there from Makaji. We we'll hopefully see that head kick as well. Talk us through this, Phil. That was absolutely beautiful. Rear leg, as we alluded to, coming from that southpaw stance, it comes up at an unconventional angle. Boom! And the way that Makaziev hit the ground, I thought he was gone. Yeah, and this is where instinct kicks in, Kiri. This is where him being a grappler since he was two, three, four years old, that's where it came into play. It does. I think strategically there was a little bit of a, a mistake on Broly's part there. I don't think where he wants to engage him is on the ground. But then the fact he was also able to hang on the ground with Makaziev is also another feather in his cap. So Without he's bound to be brimming with confidence going into the second round. Second round is upon us at the main event here at the Arabian Night. Brave 48. Whew. Makajiev in the blue corner. Giron. Giron, sorry, in the red. They touch gloves. We are underway once again. Such tension in this room. Oh, it's ridiculous. You can feel, I say room, we're, we're outside. outside. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> such tension on the planet. This is, uh, that's where our heads are at right now. We can't even make a distinction between the setting in which we are in. It's almost like Jeroen sizing him up for another big kick, either upstairs or downstairs. Well, that, as we said, the body kick is open from that stance for both of them, but so is the head kick. You see how, if, what Jeroen did there, if that's what he can do, if he can land a couple of strikes, get out again, and again, almost like a Diaz style accumulation of punches, and that it will in turn fatigue Makajiev. Yeah, fatigue, fatigue has certainly been a telling trait in the Makajiev. Makajiev, of course, known as a grappling specialist, but he's show, showing some sl slick strikes to us as well. Yeah, coming from the Akhmat Fight Club, they've got so many bodies down there that they can train with and learn from, and the facilities are, are phenomenal. Brian, there's only three things you can count on in life, death, taxes, and Akhmat fighters bringing it. <laughs> Jeroen stepping in with that check hook. Oh, there he is, starting to attack that leg with the knee brace on it, which is on his left knee. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Stepping forward is Jeroen. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him go inside, outside, and try and compromise that knee a little bit. Oh, attempted counter strike there over the top, coming from Makhachev. And he's taking some breaths. Look for him to blitz forward, try and create an opportunity for that clinch, for that takedown. But saying that when you're against a pinpoint striker like Jeroen is uh, easier said than done. Did get a shot off over the top there. In the corner of Makhachev is uh, Daoud Shahayev. Shahayev, one of uh, one of his training partners, hit him and his four brothers, three other brothers, I should say, including a pair of twins, are fantastic fighters. Tentative stuff here. Happy to pick his shot, Jeroen Phil. Yeah, as I say, it seems to be that accumulation that he's looking for right now to, to really drag that fight into the deeper waters. He's had a little bit of taste of the ground game. He's thought, that's not particularly where I want to spend all my time. Yes, I acquitted myself well, but what if I can drag this fight potentially into even a third round? Absolutely. And for me, Kirik, oh, there's a much different level of understanding of range in this. You look at the winging shots coming from Makajiev that are miles away from connecting, whereas look at that stepping in and causing damage is Jeroen. Makhachev, as much as, as much as anything else, is trying to control the distance to try and lure his opponent in where he can entangle his arms, maybe pull guard, try and win the fight from there, or get his opponent to overextend, get into those hips, take him down with a leg trip. Winging hooks once again from Makhachev. It's just cleaner work from Jeroen right now. Jeroen oh. slightly buckled the leg there, and Jeroen's doing a good job of, of keeping his back from the cage. He's always occupying that center, landing his strikes, bit of lateral movement, so that he's not leaving himself vulnerable to the takedown from Makhachev. And that lead leg is the primary target in this second round of this three-round fight. Which also takes the pop out of the takedown, because you can't drop down on it for the double. Oh, now his back's against the cage. Will Makaji have used this as an opportunity, but no. Once again in the center. Oh, he got clipped. There's weapons. Oh, in nice mixed head movement. Sorry. No, my mistake. I tripped over you there. Sorry. There's weapons in mixed martial arts, Kirik, that can help you set up takedowns like jabs like uh, co certain combinations that get you closer to your opponent and we're just not seeing that from Makajiev at the minute the simplest way to take down an opponent in mixed martial arts is to throw a one-two at him in order to coax him into throwing a one-two at you it's impossible to place your hips to stop a double leg and at the same time strike effectively Ooh. i don't believe however the double leg is Makajiev's favored way of getting down to the ground he likes to entangle the arms with his own go for a leg trip Oh, that left straight is starting to find a little bit of a home on the chin of Makaziev. When you look at the difference in, in shot choice, Makaziev is throwing winging hooks, whereas there is a much more direct approach coming from Giroud and a much more successful one in that second round. Oof, very, very deep waters now from Makaziev. Here we have Daoud Shahayev in there with his training partner, his friend. Trying to muster him up, but let's talk about some of the action, Phil. And there you see just some of the work. The kicks are coming from behind the punches. Everything's sequential. Nothing's thrown just for the sake of winging punches. Targeted the leg for a little bit, which I think was very intelligent. And it'll be interesting to see just how quickly Makajiev gets up because there has been a little bit of controversy around him not getting up quickly off the cage and fights have been stopped in that fashion. And when you look at just the physics of the choices of weapon Kirik those winging shots of Makajiev not being set up they, they take a lot longer to get than those straight shots of Jeroen and Jeroen is landing on the money his accuracy is there as well they do there's physics and defense as well the backward movement that Makajiev is showing is taking the sting off of those shots that are coming in a shot that's half as strong if it catches the opponent moving in at the right time can take you out whereas if the opponent's moving away it's not so Makajiev is using some physics and those big uh, winging shots I believe are more to keep his opponent from doing anything keep his opponent away at, after he's thrown his combination so we are at our final five minutes of this main event here on Brave 48, Makhachev in the blue corner, taking on Giroud oh, in the red. Oh, that's a big knee. 
Solid knee. Gentlemen, Broly has been told by his corner to turn it up, and he's clearly listened to him. And it is just a, a much more measured clinical approach, approach from Gerund. It's a kickboxing approach pretty much at the minute. It's such a... Uh, yeah, that's his wheelhouse. This yeah. is where he does a lot of his best work. Must be said, he does also have six wins via decision, so he is acclimated to going the, the distance in a fight. And you can hear that, you can hear Dao Shakaev saying you have one round to win this. One round. And now just three minutes, 50 seconds of that round for Makhajiev. Makhajiev, for me, is lacking just a little bit of urgency and that could be borne out of fatigue. I was going to say that, that that is what is needed now, some sort of urgency to, to make something happen. It's it's great he's not taken too much damage off the back of that, that getting dropped in the first round. It's great he's still in this fight, but to make it happen, to make, to take the victory, he needs mm -hmm. to do something and do something quick. On the balance of power, it, it does feel like Jerund is winning this fight so far. We talk about control, Kira, we got, sorry, we talk about damage, but at the minute, just in control, is Jeroen. He's having it all his own way. Seems to be very much one-way traffic. It is. He has not been able to inflict much damage with it, though, but there's no question in my mind, for what it's worth, that he is ahead two rounds to zero at this point. Final three minutes. Always on the back foot. Makajiev has got to do something. Got to find the fire from somewhere. He's looking to counter, which I, I don't think is the right game plan here. Not if you are looking to uh, to switch the tide, the momentum, Phil. Go oh, just close there with the head kick. And I think Jerund is so good at getting out of the space after he lands the shots. That was a great one, too. That it's going to be very, very difficult for Magajiev to get the takedown. Oh, another oh. shot right down the pipe. What I would like to see Magajiev do is punch his way into a takedown. Use those big shots to try and get some sort of connection. And then he's got an uphill struggle still, Kirik, because the, the clock's against him to get a submission within two minutes against a high-level fighter like Giroud. That's very difficult. This is not a fighter who can be taken down and tapped out quickly. And it's not a fighter who's out of condition. It's much easier to get a knockout from standing or submission from the ground when a fighter is exhausted. You are not looking at an exhausted fighter in Elias June. Fighting at his own pace, very happy at his own range as well, Phil. And this is going to be a huge feather in the cap if he's to get this win against somebody who is as infamously dangerous on the ground as Makajiev, especially having spent a little bit of time with him. There's oh, a little bit of urgency. Guillotine. This is deep. Oh, I don't this know. This is deep. Oh, Makajiev has got to fight those hands. Can he? He's tapping. He's, he's tapping. He's tapping. Oh, he's he's out. Out. Giroud claims the victory again by Guillotine. A stunning debut for the Frenchman. That is his eighth win and how fitting is it that the Frenchman has his eighth win via guillotine. <laughs> that is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Incredible performance. A submission specialist was submitted in front of our eyes. That is absolutely huge. Becoming only the third man to submit Abdul Rahman Makhajiev. So, so in control through those rounds and then once that... our main event let's hand it for one more time to that man Carlos Kramer all right Brave Nation what an incredible way to finish our historic Brave 48 Arabian night 
This main event comes to a dramatic close at three minutes and 34 seconds of the third round. Your winner by guillotine, Elias Broly Jun. Elias Jirun, a successful debut, not just a debut, but as the main. All right, ladies and gentlemen, fireworks tonight, and we have our main event of the evening. Let's welcome our first fighter into the cage. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. The main event of the evening. Five, five minute rounds for the Brave Combat Federation Featherweight Championship of the World. Your judges are Thorsten Haas, Shalon Sandarusi, and Chris Easley. Before we begin, I have one question and one question only. Nashama of Jordan, are you ready? Well, let's meet our first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. His fans are mixed martial artists with a record of nine wins and three losses. He stands 177.8 centimeters tall and weighs already 65 kilograms. Representing WCA fight team out of Warsaw, Poland. Give it up for the challenger, Jakob Kuba Kowalewicz. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins and four losses. He stands 177.8 centimeters tall and weighs already 65.7 kilograms. From Le Bon Ecole Gym in Montpellier, France, by way of Algeria, give it up for the reigning, defending, Brave combat featherweight champion of the world, Elias Smile Bootjakestown! For the instructions, Ferdinand Basul. Bernie Basson, your referee. Five rounds of action scheduled for the Brave Combat Federation Featherweight Championship. This is what we have worked so hard to get to, your main event. What an incredible event it's been, and now it comes down to this. Bernie Basson, the fighters are so ready to get down to business. And here we go, they come out of the corners, round number one in the Algerian flag, that is Elias Bodig's time taking on the Polish fire Kovalevich. Kovalevich pushing Bodig's time up against the fence, but really quickly, smile trying to climb up. So sneaky, so wiry is Bodig's time. It all started with that big victory that nobody expected as he took out Wyo Watson, the UFC vet. They took out another UFC vet in Masio Fullen. Outside leg kick, that one snap. What are you seeing so far, here? I'm seeing a better striker and smile, and I think he's going to despite the fact that he almost pulled guard there when he was up against the fence, which shows how happy a guy he is. He doesn't seem to care where the fight stays. He's happy everywhere. I think you're going to see him try and rely heavily on those hands and legs, because I think they're better. Great short shot. Great accurate shots to beautiful right hand. He's going to shoot for a takedown, but a great sprawl by Kovalevich. They call him Kuba. Coming out of that talent rich area in Poland. Big knee there by Kuba. Another knee. A smile is backed up against the fence. Scheduled for five rounds, folks. And there it is. How often do you
do you see people try and pull guard in MMA anymore? It dates back to the mid 90s. Shows incredible confidence, incredible skill. Listening very, very well. You can see him looking over to his corner at all times and listening to his instructions. I need to learn a little French so I can tell you exactly what's going on there. And there he goes again. He's going to pull guard. Kuba's going to dump on his back and he's going to bait him in. And here we go. Here you go, Kieran. This is what he's been wanting. Man of your caliber can definitely appreciate a guy that is willing to go for subs from his back. And there he goes. And this is why he's doing it. He really believes in his jiu-jitsu. Looking for the armbar. Looking for the triangle. You don't see a whole lot of fighters that are that confident at this point in mixed martial arts to pull guard like that. It's incredible. I can think of one. Demi and Maya. Yep, and I was about to say. I know we were thinking of the same person. Now I know there's two. Definitely works for him. Bodic's job was slated to go toe to toe with Lucas Martins in what was going to be a fantastic fight. Lucas Martins was unable, though, to make the weight and unable to fight. Very, very disappointed with Bodic's job. If you're Kovalevich, I mean, do you, do you tell him to stand up and take the thing back to the feet, or do you let him play? It, this is too dangerous a guard to spend a lot of time in, as you can see. I don't think this is where he wants to hang out. I think at some point, Smile's going to take one of those arms, pull it off, and put it over his mantelpiece at home. It certainly seems that way. you have a guard this dangerous, you can't posture back and throw heavy, heavy shots or your arm gets taken off. So you're reduced to throwing tiny little shots that don't have a lot of effect. Still playing it fairly smart, though, is Kovalevich. He hasn't given up anything. He hasn't really overextended or overcommitted. Like you said, just short shots, but enough to stay on top. Trying to isolate that left arm. Getting into it here in Jordan as we have reached our main event. Five round affair. Charging forward is Smile, the champion. Look at those legs already. Those three right low kicks, now four. Well, folks, it's time to go to round number two of a potential five round fight and the fight. Begins. Folks, don't forget about our fantastic sponsors out here that have made this event so possible. Unaya, Shami Eye Center, Jordan Tourism Board, Landmark Hotel, Green Hill, the Specialty Hospital, and Bliss FM and Hala Radio. Going right down the middle there is Leah's Bodic's job. Beautiful straight punches and then right back to the legs. And I think the legs is going to spell some serious problems here for Kovalevich. I believe those legs already have. Yeah, I think his footwork is compromised already. Nice technique once again. Normally I'd say that's a great thing, but then you got to go down to the ground with smile. <laughs> that's, an that's your reward. Point. That's your reward. Just going to the ground with a guy that is just dangerous on all limbs. Trying to climb up for a triangle. There's a chance he's even trying to invert completely and go for a leg lock. I wouldn't put it past him at this point. This is the highest level of jiu-jitsu in mixed martial arts. It's a little modified from what you see in a gi, but it's high level. That 
outside leg, and once again, Kuba catches it. He's starting to catch on now. He's timing those kicks perfectly, and he's starting to catch the kicks as they come in. I believe Smile might be able to keep his balance if he wanted to. I just think he's comfortable everywhere, he, everywhere the fight goes. This is a man with a true love for combat. person that can smile after getting punched in the face is always a different level of crazy in my opinion. Very well put. About the halfway point here of round number two. Folks, remember this is a five round affair for the featherweight championship in a very, very stacked division the featherweight championship. Lucas Martin, of course, still waiting in the wings. I know it'll probably take another win for him to get back up to title contention. Flexibility there by Smile, just kind of. He's trying something. I don't even know what it is. He's coming over the top. It looked like he was trying to go into the arm bar, but now it's going to be the triangle. It's not a tight triangle. It's a great attempt, though, by Smile, contorting his body to be able to pull that off. Oh, and it looks like we have a possible head and arm choke here by Kovalevich, but he's going to give up on that wisely. There was no way he was going to get out the side. If you're a bird watcher, you go out in the bush and you watch exotic birds. This is really exotic jujitsu we're seeing from Smile. There he goes again, just 360 attempted. degree inversion. Halfway through that, he could have gone for a leg lock. It presented itself, but it didn't. That being said, I mean, you kind of, you toil and you're kind of playing a dangerous game if you're Bodic Dom. We talked about the change in the rules and, and what submission attempts mean, et cetera, et cetera. But you play kind of a dangerous game staying on the bottom for a long period of time. Because if you were to get through five rounds and that's how you played the game, there's always a good chance that a judge is gonna go the other way. It's very, very true. It's a, it's a dangerous game, but I, be, I, I really do think Smile believes Completely, utterly in his jiu-jitsu. So completely a pull guard. Why well, I have a feeling that you give him 25 minutes anytime, any place, he's gonna find a way to get a submission. Perfectly put, referees decided to stand him up. He could stand up by himself. Perfectly reasonable call. Someone else gonna probably low kick him again. Normally, I would say that's not a good idea, but he doesn't have a problem going to the ground with him, so why not take that chance? Worst case scenario, he'd go down to the ground. And He's responding to the low kick grab by going for the calf, which is much harder to grab. The event leading up to this main event, basically Jordan beat everybody. So <laughs> it was a landslide. Jordan came out and represented in a big, big way. But now it's Algeria and Poland. And taking a look at Bodic Dom's history, all the submissions that he does have, and he has a lot, they're all arm locks or chokes. No triangles involved, arm locks and chokes. Now that could represent a lot of things, a choke. That could be a guillotine, that could be a rear naked choke. It could be a lot of different techniques. If I had to guess, I think he wants to add a leg lock to his, to his record. I mean, why not? It's like getting another achievement on Xbox. It's building up the gamer score. Ooh. Ooh, and a big knee to the body of Kovalevich. He ate that one. It's going to be a very sore plane ride home for Kovalevich. A lot of damage on those legs. Smile does something that the highest level fighters do. He'll go slow, 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 and then explode. Slow and explode. It's hard for the opponent to even tell which guy he's fighting at any given second. Yeah, really hard to time a fighter like that. Kovalevich grabs hold of that leg, and Smile says, okay, let's do it again. Kovalevich will get credit for that takedown. 
Smile fell backwards, Kovalevich jumped on top. And definitely not gonna hurt his scoreboard. Kovalevich has a, he's gotta figure out what to do. If he postures back, he's in more danger of getting submitted or swept. If he stays close, he can't hit hard. He's taking the brave choice. He's posturing back, trying to land big shots. But there's a risk in that. There we go again, triangle time. Nope, he's gonna grab that arm. He continues to switch. Seems like he's had a chance a couple times at the triangle. I mean, maybe he's just not as comfortable with it. The first time he didn't have the leg on the right side. That time he had a, he had a possible triangle. I think he loves this game so much he's not overcommitting to anything. Most fighters are like, oh my God, I've almost got him. And I think he feels like he's almost got his opponent all the time. Yakub. Kuba Kovalevich still on top. A little over two minutes to go here, and Freddy Passan's gonna stand this fight up. Another good stand up. He has a really slick left uppercut. Does Bodic John. Snuck it in at the end of round number one, and he just nearly got it again. Ran right into the kid. One two from Smile, and he timed that one perfect. Another right hand. Seems like Bodhisattva really has this timing down right now. Has the range, has the timing. Hitting it from different angles. Really just putting on a clinic. And he's gonna get underneath that chin. He's in a very, very precarious position, but unable to submit the Polish fighter. A very, very tough customer is Kovalevich. Attempt to stack him up again. Brave Combat Federation number 10 from Amman, Jordan, the 10th edition. What a milestone here in the incredible country, the Kingdom of Jordan. Those legs just keep climbing and climbing, hips keep swelling side to side. And Smile's not taking any damage. This is what brilliant jujitsu looks like. And, he, and there he goes again, attacking again. And there it is, 10 seconds left here for round number three. Is Bodixdam is happy to play on the bottom. And as you say, Kobe, round four. Kovalevich, Bodek Don. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to this historic event. We have had some doozies, some great finishes. As we said before, Jordan with an incredible showing tonight. Woo. Big upset, Franz Malambo getting the big win over Philippe Abrani. The Hadby and Fakhradin. Feud has been squashed as Hadby gets the win. And now here it is. And it looks like Bodixon landed a nice shot. Now he's on he top. He just flew in. And there he goes. Look for him to control the oh, head. There it Put is. the foot under the, the knee. I don't think there's a chance. And that's it.
ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible championship fight. Give it up for both of these warriors. The bout comes to a close at 54 seconds of round four. Your winner by a triangle choke. And still, the Brave Federation featherweight champion of the world, Elias Smile Boot Takes